The Salvation Project is an indie horror game created by a small dev team and released on Itch in 2021. The game was made in a measly 48 hours for a game jam at the time, and it's genuinely amazing for a jam game, potentially my favorite I've ever played. The Salvation Project parodies television PSAs whilst diving into some pretty taboo topics and also having a couple shocking and intriguing twists. You play as a devout Christian woman named Karen who frequently watches this religious program on TV called The Salvation Project. It's hosted by a Kermit the Frog-like character named Seth. Seth teaches you how to be a better person and how to protect your home from the devil's evils. The first is to remove any resemblance of Satan from your household. This inspires Karen to burn her son's rulebook for the game Dungeons and Demons, a Metallica tape, or a Mentallica tape actually, my mistake, and a Mentallica poster. She comfortably, safely assumes that it's a sign of devil worship. The next airing of The Salvation Project informs its viewers that the devil tends to prey on people most after 8pm, stating it as the scientifically proven devil's hour. This causes Karen to go into every room in her house to turn on the lights, in order to protect herself before the clock reaches 8. However, the power goes out due to an overload, so she needs to go to the garage to restart the power. But without the lights on, the devil lurks in the shadows. So, in order to survive, Karen needs to sneak around the beast and avoid being caught, though he does tend to just vanish. Once Karen reaches the garage and turns the power back on, she recovers from her state of panic. She states how she feels she was close to death and needs to rest. When Karen leaves the garage and makes her way to the living room, Seth is there. <laughs> this Muppet-looking son of a bitch is just in the house. Seth tells us that he's here to help us protect our home from Satan. Karen questions why he's here specifically, because surely everyone needs that help, but he says that he does help everyone with his program and is giving us special treatment. He says we're another lucky child of God. He tells us to go to sleep while he stays on watch and there's more to be done tomorrow. The next day, there's another program from The Salvation Project, and this one is so unspeakably funny. As you should know, the devil is coming! And we should all be protecting ourselves and our loved ones from the devil. Check your windows! Check your windows! Board them up! Board them up! Satan shall not pass! Check your crosses! Make sure they are not inverted! I love how over the top this game gets at this point. The vocal inflections from Seth's voice actor is just so entertaining. After this broadcast from Seth, Seth is still in the living room. Interesting. How did he do that? Just as Seth on the TV said, Seth reminds us to board up our windows, keep our crosses right side up, and keep the lights on. Naturally, Karen goes around her house keeping the lights on and turning all of her upside down crosses right side up. She also goes to the garage to get the necessary supplies to board off all of the windows on the house. She does all of this whilst, of course, avoiding the devil that lurks in the house. But, whilst on the top floor of her home, the devil approaches Karen, and there's no way for her to avoid the creature. The devil gets a hold of Karen, which causes the game to cut to black, but then it fades back in, almost as if nothing happened. When Karen then goes to talk to Seth after finishing all of her tasks, he just acknowledges that she finished all of her tasks. She gets frustrated that Seth is being insensitive, as she was just attacked, this deeply angers Seth, who shouts in return that he is not insensitive, and Karen should not anger the one who gives her salvation. Seth tells her to go to sleep, but Karen doesn't want to, but he demands that she does anyway. The next day, we get to see the final broadcast from The Salvation Project. Remember when I said the last one was over the top? Well, this one cranked up the dial even further. Hey there, missus! I see you're back again for the Daily Wisdom! You are under attack! Your life is under attack! Your soul is under attack! We have to go for the nuclear option! You have to call for help! Luckily, our manager knows the correct ritual to summon a guardian angel for your home! Do it! Now! Do it! Now! Seth is, once again, in the living room to help us survive and be a good Christian. He tells us to get candles, chalk, and a lighter. This is what we need for the ritual that will supposedly grant us a guardian angel. You get all of the equipment and bring it to Seth to begin the ritual. This is where it's revealed that Seth has actually been lying the whole time, and was using you as a pawn in his actual plan to summon Satan in her home. 
the Dark Lord rises out of the pentagram that you drew for the ritual and attacks Karen. That is, until she wakes up. Everything suddenly seems completely normal, like none of this ever happened. The phone starts to ring, and when it's answered, strange wailing sounds are heard, until it's revealed that the devil is still behind her and the game ends. So, what's actually happening here? Well, I've been hiding something from you. Throughout this game, whilst you're doing all these tasks and experiencing all this crazy shit, there are also a bunch of ripped pieces of a photograph around the house that you're supposed to collect. If you don't collect them, then what I just described to you is what will happen at the end of the game. If you do collect every piece of the photo, everything is the same up until Karen wakes up. Once again, everything seems completely normal, as if nothing happened. The phone rings, and a man is on the other line. He says that Karen hasn't been returning his calls, and asks if she has been taking her medication every day. Karen says, I need help, I want to see my family again. This whole game was just a delusion from presumably a paranoid schizophrenic whose condition has been so dangerous that her family has seemingly been taken away from her for their safety. It's a very sad conclusion to an otherwise silly satirical take on a horror game. With that being said, I love the way this game explores a pretty taboo subject. A subject that many wouldn't consider diving into out of fear for how a large population of people would react, yet a subject that an even larger population would very much relate to. This game gives a more than valid and agreeable commentary on how some people are blinded by their beliefs, or take their beliefs a little too far, which at best limits their ability to appreciate art or the interests of certain loved ones, or at worst, can cause paranoia that takes over their lives and makes them act so irrationally that it can be dangerous. I, and the developers of this game, are not saying that Christians are inherently paranoid schizophrenics, that would be genuinely insane, but people that are so bizarrely devout to their fate that they would listen to a talking puppet telling them to burn a Metallica tape in order to keep the devil from roaming around their home to kill them are a little bit too out there. A lot of people grow up raised by beliefs like this, and it's actually a very common reason that people leave the church in adulthood. It's because they feel so judged for simply enjoying art or content that their family or church don't approve of, usually because of a realistically arbitrary belief. It also limits people in how they live their lives, or the paths they want to lead in their lives, or the lifestyle they want to have. I think a lot of people would love this game because it's something they understand so well. It'd probably even be comforting to some extent because of just how direct and understandable it is. It does this whilst also being incredibly funny. Although it's more than worth giving this game its flowers for being a well put together commentary on some of the more negative sides of Christianity, it also gets flowers for having the balls to be so outwardly, undeniably hilarious. Seth is such a funny character and the way his energy just keeps ramping up alongside the chaos is so entertaining, and his voice, perfect. Absolutely perfect. The setup of the concept is also very creative, and like I mentioned, very sad. Though this game very much explores Christian propaganda, it does so through an allegory about mental illness. The events of this game are essentially the greatest fears of a more old-school traditional Christian woman, and it all becomes real from the perspective of our protagonist. But it only becomes real through a delusion that's driven by an untreated medical condition, and finding out at the end that Karen has lost and misses her family, obviously because of her condition, is just heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking when you realize that that's the reason there's no one in the room when you're getting rid of your son's stuff. The style and art direction of this game is also very nice. If you've been on this channel for any period of time, you know I am simply a sucker for a low-poly look. I love it. I also really like the way Karen's hand doesn't really suit the rest of the game's style. It reminds me of blank underscore 01. There's also some surprisingly fantastic atmosphere in this game. On the final day when you're collecting everything for the ritual, the atmosphere is so thick and your view has this eerie red glow. The music also helps to enhance just about every part of the game. The music during the final broadcast from the Salvation Project is so disturbing and glitchy and fucked up, and I love the sound of it. The Salvation Project is simply such a cool game, and it's beyond impressive that it was made in such a short period of time. I've adored this game since I first played it. It's so unique and executed in such an entertaining and intriguing way. It doesn't have a lot of content, and it's not exactly a masterpiece, but it does exactly what it needs to do to be great. It's cool and funny, 
fairly spooky, and it actually has something to say.